What is that? What is that like? Now to a mystery that is keeping a lot of people up at night in the Bakersfield area. People complaining of what appears to be or sounds like loud explosions in their neighborhoods with no explanation. These doorbell camera videos were posted to the Neighbors app last week, showing a flash of light and a loud booming sound. We've also seen reports of this across social media platforms, and I can tell you from personal experience, my neighborhood is rocked with these nightly explosions on almost a weekly basis, and these are not explosions from your garden variety fireworks. We checked in with the Bakersfield Police Department and the Kern County Sheriff's Office, but authorities tell us they are not currently working. Uh, it is not clear tonight what or who is causing it. The house is rattling, you can see the ground rattling, and it's booming all the time, you know, and it's kind of like, what's going on, you know? You don't know what's, what's happening. It's the bottom of the booms, 
that is Betty Wynn reports, and they aren't any closer to the truth. So in the face of that mockery, a new plan was hatched. It changed the title, though. It's now called The Great Reset. And here is what the WEF Ubermeister has to say about it. So in terms of changing our mindset, and here, um, uh, what is at the forefront is to create a new model, a new concept, a new uh, definition of capitalism. Northern Siberia, it hit 100.4 degrees. We are looking right now at the all-time record heat for the Britain. A catastrophic Category 4 hurricane bearing down the U.S. We could be looking at a majority of the surrounding communities flooded with upwards of 9 to 20 feet of water. The two largest wildfires in Colorado history are burning dangerously close, just miles apart. On the heels of what has been a historic and deadly wildfire season, the wind standing these flames are expected to last another 24 hours. Tensions are on fire, and you're watching it with your eyes. It is officially the busiest hurricane season ever on record. The few people we met who chose to stay behind here, they stay behind because they're simply overwhelmed. There's no rest in this record year for the hurricane battery Gulf Coast. didn't light up till daybreak. The strongest hurricane to hit Louisiana in more than 150 years. A lot of folks we met convinced it couldn't get worse. Till it did. And here we go again. It was six weeks ago we stood on this exact balcony as Laura tore through this area. The night in Delta. If Laura was painful, Delta felt personal. Both hurricanes on nearly the exact same path. The fire season in Australia was unprecedented. Millions of acres left blackened, bare, homes destroyed, an area roughly the size of Iowa just incinerated. The, the kind of toll that this is taking on habitats, on animals. Is there any way to describe it? If you look into a, into a forest environment anywhere in East Australia, usually it's, it's full of sound and color, movement. If you walk into one after a fire, it's like walking into, uh, into a silent, dark room. Every year since I've been a correspondent, somebody has told me this has to be the worst year ever for fire. Every single year. Rows of burned grass, but really, that's all it was. I have no frame of reference for how bad fires can get, uh, but I would soon find out. So 2017 is when these fires started taking the life of their own. The level of destruction that they started to bring was unlike the things that people had seen in their normal fire season. I've got to go on earth behind you. Later that year, when the Tubbs fire ripped through Santa Rosa, a major city in Northern California, I couldn't believe the speed in which it traveled. 2019 was bad. 2020, I mean, you think you've seen the worst fires of all time, and then 2020 happened. Tonight, much of the West Coast is smothered in a blanket of smoke and misery. The next year is sure to bring new records and more extreme climate events. Our planet's alarms are sounding, and they will only grow louder. And a lot is going on in this video. There's red beams shooting. There's a big planet behind what we call the Sturgeon Moon. That is not our moon. I don't know what that bright spot is in the sky. And a planet just appeared on the right side of this moon that is right behind this big, huge planet. So this planet has moons. You see this red and polite beam that's going in and out. And then to the left, you see the beam that's sitting there. But you're also going to see a planet on the left side of this, what they call a sun halo around the moon at night. It's not a sun halo. Y'all know what it is. Look at the cloud system around it, and it is wrapped in darkness, just like God said was going to happen when he comes. The darkness, the clouds, and then the light from him. What we have here, behold, the light from him, huh? 
here goes something that looks like a mushroom cloud with a comet coming out of the middle of it, huh? Heading towards the Earth. And we don't know it's the end times. We don't know we need to get our uh, crap or our shit in gear. We don't know. You know, you got me warning these people. Before it was a joke to them, wasn't it? Oh, rap the news, believe in the Biru. Rap the news, calling the planet hell. Rap the news, got his brain up in the sky. Them affirmatives, them ain't planets. Them is this and them is that. And now they quiet, ain't they? I'm all up in their face and they ain't saying nothing, huh? Because they know I was right the whole damn time. And what do we have here? After the clouds move, it's going to be a planet on the left bottom hand side of this sturgeon moon. This was filmed right in my own backyard. I didn't really want to put it on there because I wasn't really sure what that blue thing was on the left hand side of this sturgeon moon. But it was a double halo and a bunch of weird things going on. So here's the woman having the same thing but on the right side of the moon. There's this damn thing on her closed circuit TV. What the hell is that? She's trying to show you the date. And then she's gonna move in closer to show you what is shocking her ass. Straight up shock. You know, a, another moon from another planet. And behold, here we have these uh, planetary system in this um, freaking, what do they call that? I can't think of the name of it, but it's making these uh, lights and everything glow in the middle of the night. And this is a while ago, I showed you this before. But now look at it in Jamestown, where the first slaves uh, hit America. This just happened the other day in Jamestown, North Carolina. Those little flashy lights have turned to something very vibrant, huh? And you don't know you in the end times. You don't know it's all about the end. You don't know the Most High God is sending you signs and speaking to you loud and clear. You don't know it's time to just worship Him alone. Christ already told you, worship and serve the Lord your God and Him alone. What is y'all doing? Christ said, they worship me in vain. But y'all continue to worship Him. God in Christ, huh? Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. And Christ said, I didn't come to be served. So what y'all serving them for? Well, to me, the title is Biden Gives FEMA License to Kill. And I will read. In the age of Obama, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, reigned supreme. The disgraced president gave the infamous agency unilateral authority to conduct operations that far exceeded the scope of disaster management. With its then director, Craig Hugate, an agent performing functions reminiscent of the SS in Nazi Germany. Donald J. Trump stopped all that. And despite resistance from agency management that operated in contravention of his orders, he gutted FEMA's budget and manpower and shuttered four FEMA camps at which law-abiding American citizens were kept against their will and without trial. In January 2017, Trump pledged to curtail FEMA's powers for the duration of his presidency, which ended prematurely thanks to the deep state, criminal cabal, and its new leader, Joe Biden. The new front man really here. Change that. Front man, front man, that's all he is. On Monday, 24 January, Joe Biden restored the power FEMA had under Barack Hussein Obama, essentially granting agent a license to kill for any reason or no reason at all based solely on nebulous instructions. This information came from a current Region 5 supervisor under promise of anonymity. He claimed that Deanne Criswell, Biden's nominee for FEMA director, the same vicious woman who convinced Governor Cuomo to stash still alive elderly COVID-19 nursing home patients in mobile refrigerated trailers has been slotted to leave FEMA into the next part of the 21st century. If confirmed, her first missions include reopening FEMA camps and targeting a list of known Second Amendment, Amendment advocates, militia members, patriots, and others that espouse anti-government sentiment. We quote our source. 
Though she hasn't been nominated yet, she's on tour at all the facilities right now and grading them. This woman is a cold-hearted bitch and happy to assist Biden in his evil plans. I don't plan to stay on the job. I can't be party to this. If Biden and Criswell have their way, America will be unrecognizable within a few years, as FEMA's armed and dangerous police force will have confiscated nearly every registered, and possibly unregistered, weapon in the nation. Even bolt-action hunting rifles and shotguns are too dangerous for Biden's vision of a new America. Handguns for self-defense, too, are on the chopping block. If no one has a gun, then no one needs a gun for self-defense, Biden allegedly told Criswell. If progressive countries can exist harmoniously without firearms, then so too can the United States, Biden told her. However, Biden just completed a purchase order that will put 15,000 shiny new CAR-15 assault rifles in the hands of poorly trained FEMA operatives. His undeclared message is obvious, guns for me but not for thee. Quoting our source, FEMA wants to be the only ones doing the shooting. Where is the sport if someone can shoot back? They'll start grabbing assault rifles first, then work their way down to 22 caliber two fed rifles. They'll have authority to take without asking. FEMA agents have been granted permission to use any law force needed, including lethal, to fulfill directives. Quoting him one last time, it's a license to kill. Criswell's wording was specific. She did not say shoot only in self-defense. The directive is to get guns, and if a person resists, armed or not, we can take them out. He knows that he is, he, he doesn't, he's not inheriting anything. Look at everything, and I'm going to do it in a pocket play. Not, pocket play, not. This is what I imagine he saw the man was saying was, he, uh, Isaac was telling him that he has given Jacob everything. I will play that back again. Get everything, and I'm going to do it in a pocket play.
the guarantee that I will get over 95% of the African American vote. I promise you. See, I thought I made this up. I didn't make this up. I'll just pay close attention. Look how much. I don't know if you just don't point to a black woman you know, like that. This nigga gets it right here, yeah. <laughs> Trump is telling no, sorry, I'm that, that you, the chosen people. Men laugh at this. Look, it is funny. It is funny. But it, it, what, in, the, in the real sense, it shows you how discredited the people we are. That's the reason why I, I, I said what I said about him. Because what he's actually doing, he's actually showing us the filth of our minds right in front of us. So we have no excuse to remain this way. So whenever the medicine, like the bishop is bringing out, Whenever this medicine comes along to clean our people up, I'm going to say what he said. What the hell is wrong with us when we don't accept this medicine and get our minds right? That's the question. Oh, man, that, that, that thing was beautiful. Right. We need a man speaking the thing that white America really want to say a long time ago they want to say. He really speak their minds for them. Because when you see a man like that talk like that, you see, you see the, the white people, they all uh, are blown into them. That's really what's in their heart they want to say about black people. But they feel like this man right here, since he's in the uh, light, he can say it, nobody's going to get hurt by it. The reason we're laughing, because we've been telling you that for years. That's why we're laughing. You have to listen to The white can tell you, stop! You're in the lowest state, now you say, oh. That's what I had that going on. Yeah, you remember. We'd be downtown. And while, while the brothers were speaking, we had this white man that would come to the camp and say, do you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about. Bring him up while the, while the, while the men are teaching, it's going to take out the audience. They don't really pay attention. Then they have to call the white man over. And he knew that he was being called for that reason. They get the microphone and while he's talking, the Negroes haven't figured out that a white man is speaking yet. So you know what the, you know what the, the priest will say? He said, like, hey, Negroes, I got a white man speaking now. Pay attention and they listen. In other words, he has to come and co-sign and say the things that get your attention. Otherwise, it don't ring home. So the things, because we're the ones on welfare, unemployment, always want a job. Can you hire me, please? And we were the kings and gods of the earth. Now it's calling us poor and beggars. And lifted up the beggar from the dung hill. The dung hill, we do dung is do. S H I T, that's what dung is. That's the life we live. And you gotta see it. I'm, I'm gonna tell you how bad it is. Some of y'all don't know. Those of y'all that live in uh, the projects, I'll say. You ever have cops go to your house? Let me tell y'all a secret. Some of y'all might know. Some of y'all might know. They talk about how nasty the cops are. I ain't talking about the black cops, so but the white cops, they do. They go, Now, I'm not saying that uh, these things that's common conversation. Come back to the scripture that says he raises up the beggar from the dummy. The way we live is not. And, I, and that goes for those of you who may have a, not a big house. It's still a dumb hill from where you came from. Okay? When you once had your own plot of land, things of that nature, now you're paying taxes and things of that sort. We got a good point. He raises up the poor out of the dust and lifted up the beggar from the dumb hill to set them above princes. You see that? To set us where? Above princes. And to make them inherit the throne of glory. God is going to make us to inherit the throne of glory. Was that it? For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he has set the world upon them. Did I see that? So everything is left of our benefit. The so-called Negroes and Latinos in America.